In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And greetings, everyone. And as we begin our celebration on this 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, let us pause now for a moment and ask the Lord to forgive our sins and to renew our hearts. God have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life glory to God in the pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, 
Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off, and he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idly all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started around five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I, have not, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give the last ones the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Well, greetings again, everyone. Many years ago, when I was relatively new in ministry and I was doing some mission work down in Mexico, that was in the days of black hair and about 30 pounds less than I am now, I met a couple there, an older couple, who ran a program called Vamos, which means let's go. And they were an interesting elderly couple. They had uh, run a small newspaper in uh, Vermont, a Catholic newspaper in Burlington, Vermont. And that's way basically there was their career. He said it was just a typical job and he ran a newspaper. And then they decided that they were visiting Cuernavaca, Mexico one time and they saw the poverty and they saw the, the homeless children and their families running around. And they had the idea that they wanted to serve them in simple ways. And so they began writing about what the proposal was and all of a sudden everyone started to want to jump in and help them out. So they moved to Cuernavaca and they began this program called Vamos. Their first work was providing enough money to build showers because the, for the kids, because the parents said their kids needed to be able to find a place where they could clean up. And the second thing that they wanted was vitamins so that their children could get enough vitamins so that they wouldn't have skin problems and other problems that they were facing. And they were eventually called the Vamos Kids. And I remember the person say, telling me, the, uh, the, the husband telling me that uh, he'd spent all his life in the States working in a newspaper and doing those things. And he said, you know, I made good money. But he said, I make no money on this. And this job has been the most important of my life. And it's been the most rewarding of my life. Oftentimes, I think we look at our work and we say, well, how much money do we make out of it? Or how many hours do we have to put in to get through the day or whatever it may be that it's all about a tallying up of costs and prices and things like that or we're racing for the next promotion or this or that but I, I have been amazed every time I've taken people overseas or to missions or to into the poor areas the work that they have done there has meant more than all of their careers it never fails because it's the work of the heart it's the work that we're all called to do. It's the work that isn't paid for. It's the work that gives us identity. It gives us hope. It gives us meaning in life. I think a lot of people are discovering this kind of work now that we're in the midst of this pandemic. I've had parents talk to me about how they rediscovered in the teaching of their children another form of work that's very rewarding. Trying, challenging, yes, but also rewarding and a new way of looking at what work is all about and how important that is. It's about dignity and it's about what it means to live a life. I've heard a lot of theories about work. I know one of the funny jokes in, or the funny sayings in Mexico is Americans live to work. We Mexicans, we work to live. And how true that is, 
and how important it is during this time that we think about how do we work and how do we serve each other. No job that out there is, is really less important than another, although we like to think so. How often do we still think of a, of a good job as one with a corner office with big windows and people helping us out? When in fact, maybe the person who's stacking the cereal boxes at Safeway, maybe their job is actually more important right now. Maybe what they're doing is really more life-saving than what we're doing. It was Teresa Lizzo who really kind of talked about this in her theology and her looking at life. She was a young girl who joined the Carmelites, I believe it was the Carmelites in France, and she was given the worst jobs. No one, no one kind of liked her very well. She was kind of put down, I think maybe because she came from a wealthier family or whatever it may have been. But she discovered that even the menial job of just cleaning the floor could be an incredible gift that could transform people's lives. And what an insight that was, and a reminder that the work that we do, whether we're doing it in the home or we're not recognized, or whether we're doing it on the street, or we're stacking boxes in a grocery store, or, or we're saving lives in a hospital, or we're just being present to each other, that can be a form of dignified and beautiful work that invites us to see somehow what the kingdom of God is all about. That no one's labor is discredited. That no one's labor is, be no labor is beneath someone's dignity. That we're all invited to build God's kingdom. Sometimes it's as simple as just spending time in prayer or it's doing dramatic and major things. But all of it on God's level is the same. It's about building the kingdom and building community. People are struggling today with jobs. They're struggling with what it means to, when we lose a job, what, who am I now? Maybe what we need to discover is that it's not the job that gives us identity. It's our identity that allows us to do the job that we feel called to do. So it's a reversal. That was what was discovered with that gentleman that I got to know in Cuernavaca, Mexico. He discovered that his life was really about service. It wasn't about the money. It wasn't about those things because they, in the end, didn't satisfy. Yes, they paid the bills, they got in the car, they did those things, so they had utilitarian things. But the work of the heart and the work of the spirit was what made their final years of life the most rewarding humanly possible. That's what work should do. And when we're feeling that way, we know from that emotion that we are doing God's work. So we see the landowner in today's writings. You know, it's not about rewarding for how many hours you put in. It's rewarding because you had the courage to want to help. That you had the courage to be there, whether it was for a small time or a long time. You were still doing God's work. And why should we punish someone just because they, they were not seen earlier in the day? So we're being invited, I think, in today's reading to think about work. What does it mean for us? What is our real work? Now that we have more time in some ways on our hands, or at least some of us do, to think about that, where is it leading you? What is your, what is your call in work? Sure, it's to put on food on the table, but maybe there's something more, something deeper, something richer that God is inviting us to. It's something to think about. It's something to pray over. And I give thanks to God every day that I had the privilege of meeting that couple. They saved a lot of lives. They helped start new lives and were able to make people's daily lives much better with the humble service and the free love and the free care and the free work that they offered. That's not a bad way to live a life. Let us continue our prayer. And as we continue our prayer, let us now offer our prayers and petitions to God. Through Christ, who is our light, let us seek the Lord in prayer and call upon the God who is near for the church, that she may welcome all who come to the Lord's vineyard, whoever they are and whatever the hour, we pray to the Lord. That laborers and frontline workers faced with dangerous working conditions may find support in our social teaching and solidarity in our community, we pray to the Lord. 
that we may continue with God's strength, our discipline to fight the pandemic as we move toward a new day of hope, we pray to the Lord. That this Eucharistic assembly may be the gospel's model of community in which there are neither first nor last, but only sisters and brothers in Christ, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all scientists and volunteers who are working so hard for a vaccine. May their efforts be successful, we pray to the Lord. For those in our Book of Life, the children listed in our Book of Innocence, Vernon Pearson who died this last week, and for the Rodriguez family of Cesar, Diego, Jorge, Claudio, Selena, Chris, Lynn, Josefina, and Petra, and all for whom we offer this Mass today, we pray to the Lord. For all the intentions on our wailing wall, those remembered in our wall of remembrance at the labyrinth, and for all of the spiritual and material needs of our parish community and its members, along with all those prayers that are in the deep recesses of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. In today's readings, we are reminded of the dignity of work. Help us to recognize the work we do as your disciples to build your kingdom of hope and praise. Whether we are called to the ministry of prayer or action, help us to honor the value of our calling. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And let us pray. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all of the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. together in that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us now in your homes and with your friends offer each other a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word. My soul shall be healed. Oh, I don't. 
And let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those who renew in this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Christ our Lord. And just a few announcements for you. First of all, this weekend is when we are finally beginning to have Masses back in our church. There are, those Masses are 4 p.m. on Sunday evening, 7.30 in the morning on Sunday, 11.30 in the morning on Sunday, and a mariachi Mass outside in the back at 6 p.m. And uh, those are all based on reservations if you choose to, go to attend these Masses. Again, you are not required to attend them if you are dealing with uh, pre-existing conditions or other serious illnesses. We urge you to continue to stay home. We will still be providing for you uh, Eucharist that will be offered from 9 to 11 on Sunday mornings like we've been doing all summer. That will continue for those of you who cannot make it to those, those liturgies at this time. So we just wanted to let you know what was going on in that area. Also, it came to our attention, there's an organization calling themselves Catholic Vote that we heard about, that are passing around flyers or mailing things out, claiming that they represent the Catholic Church. They do not, and I just wanted to let you know that. They do not represent what the church stands or anything else. They are also not supposed to even use the name Catholic. So if you do get one of those items, it's, it's the silly season of election time, so I would suggest you just throw it away and not worry about it because it is, does not represent the diocese, nor does it represent our parish or any other Catholic organization that is legitimately involved with, with our church. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Jesus.